Robert Edward Lee was born on January 19, 1807, in Westmoreland County, Virginia. His father, Henry Lee III, was a Revolutionary War hero and governor of Virginia. Lee was a bright and studious child and his parents provided him with a rigorous education that emphasized classical languages and literature. Lee's mother, Ann Carter Lee, was a pious woman who had a strong influence in shaping her son's moral and religious beliefs. In 1825, Lee was appointed to the United States Military Academy at West Point, where he excelled in all classes and never received a single demerit. Lee graduated second in his class in 1829 and was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Corps of Engineers. Lee's early military assignments included working on coastal defenses and surveying rivers. In 1831, he married Mary Anna Randolph Custis, the great-granddaughter of George Washington's wife, Martha Washington. The couple had seven children together, three of them eventually following their father into the military. Lee's career as a soldier was marked by steady advancement and achievement. He served in the Mexican-American War and distinguished himself as a skilled engineer and commander. Lee was instrumental in the capture of Mexico City, and his bravery and leadership earned him the rank of Brevet Colonel. After the war, Lee held a series of important positions, including Superintendent of West Point, where he instituted reforms that improved the quality of education and training for cadets. He was also present at Harper's Ferry, Virginia, where John Brown and his band of abolitionists attempted to incite a slave rebellion. Lee was placed in command of the unit which eventually quelled the uprising. The American Civil War broke out in 1861 and Lee was dragged into the conflict. Slavery and states' rights were the main drive behind the war, and Lee was forced to make a choice that would define not only his life, but the lives of all Americans. Lee believed slavery to be a moral and political evil, but, nevertheless, had owned hundreds of slaves in his lifetime. Despite his loyalty to the Union and being offered command of the U.S. Army, he resigned his commission in April 1861, following the secession of his home state of Virginia. Lee initially declined an offer to command the Confederate Army, but he eventually accepted and was named Commander-in-Chief of the Confederate Forces in Virginia. Lee's military abilities and strategic vision quickly earned him the respect and admiration of his troops and the Southern people. Lee's first major action as a Confederate general was the Seven Days Battles, in June and July of 1862. Lee's aggressive tactics and brilliant maneuvering led to a decisive victory over Union General George McClellan, who was forced to retreat after threatening the Confederate capital of Richmond. Lee continued to score victories over the Union Army in Virginia, including the Second Battle of Bull Run in August 1862 and the Battle of Fredericksburg in December of that year. He was often able to outsmart his opponents and adapt his tactics quickly to take advantage of unexpected opportunities on the battlefield. Lee's greatest military triumph came in May 1863 at the Battle of Chancellorsville. Despite being outnumbered by Union General Joseph Hooker's army, Lee split his forces and launched a surprise attack that resulted in a stunning Confederate victory. However, Lee's victory was tempered by the loss of his most trusted subordinate, General Thomas Stonewall Jackson, who was accidentally shot and killed by Confederate troops during the battle. Following his victory at Chancellorsville, Lee invaded the North in June 1863, hoping to continue his success and possibly even bring the war to an end. However, his invasion was stopped by Union General George Meade at the Battle of Gettysburg, which took place from July 1 to 3 of 1863. The battle was the bloodiest of the Civil War, and Lee suffered a decisive defeat, losing over 28,000 men. The defeat at Gettysburg was a turning point in the war and marked the beginning of the end for the Confederacy. Despite his defeat at Gettysburg, Lee remained a revered figure in the South, and his leadership and courage continued to inspire his troops. His forces were gradually pushed back by General Ulysses S. Grant's Union Army in a series of brutal battles. Lee's army was finally defeated during the Appomattox Campaign, which ended with the surrender of his army at Appomattox Court House on April 9, 1865. Lee's decision to surrender his army, effectively ended the Civil War, and his dignified and gracious behavior in defeat earned him the respect and admiration of both Union and Confederate soldiers. Following the end of the Civil War, Lee's life took a new direction. He accepted a position as president of Washington College, now Washington, and Lee University, in Lexington, Virginia. Lee was determined to rebuild and reunite the country, 
and he emphasized the importance of education and reconciliation in his role as a college president. Lee was popular with students and faculty, and he worked tirelessly to improve the college's curriculum and facilities. Lee's post-war years were also marked by personal tragedy. His wife, Mary Anna, died in 1873, and Lee's own health began to deteriorate. He suffered a stroke in 1875 and died two weeks later on October 12 of that year. His death was mourned by both North and South, and he was buried with full military honors at the Lee Chapel on the Washington College campus. Robert E. Lee's legacy is complex and controversial. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest military commanders in American history, and his strategic vision and tactical skill are still studied in military institutes. Lee's courage and leadership inspired his troops and the Southern people, and he remains a revered figure in the South to this day. However, Lee's decision to fight for the Confederacy has also made him a controversial figure, and his role in perpetuating slavery and the Confederacy's cause is a subject of debate and criticism. Lee's life and legacy are a reminder of the complex and often painful history of the United States.